Hello, 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 everyone. I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell, a sleep consultant at Helping Baby Sleep. I am a chiropractor by training, but I really found my passion, empowering other parents to teach their little ones to sleep and parent confidently day and night. And today I'm excited to talk to you about poop because everybody poops and it really is an indicator of our health. So let's talk about poop from the newborn stage into those toddler stages as well. And why are we even talking about poop? Well, poop is a reflection of your child's overall health. It's also a reflection of their feeding habits. And feeding is really integral to um, your sleeping habits, especially in those early newborn days. And the inspiration for this post came from a, 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 a client consultation that I had the other day when they asked me about their newborn's green frothy poops and what those mean, right? And you know in my Amazon bestseller, The Helping Baby Sleep Method, I talk about like feeding and sleeping and how intertwined they are and how that's all so important. So let's get started talking about poop. So the first poop really is that meconium poop. Do you remember this? When your baby was very first born, their first day of birth or maybe their second day of birth, they had this black tarry poop, right? And what is that? Well, that's remnants of waste that was collected while they were in the room. It's very tar-light and very sticky. What's really cool is that if you're breastfeeding, your breast milk actually acts like a natural laxative to, um, sorry, I've got a little, this is kind of like my toddler at home. You know, when it's hard to make phone calls, we have a toddler. Um, that's what this girl's kind of like. But your breast milk, actually, the colostrum, acts like a natural laxative in those first early days to help you get rid of that meconium poop. So that's the first poop that we all have. Then our breastfed babies have a mustard yellow poop. And, you know, there's a lot of these, right? So if you want to take a guess, I dare you to guess how many diapers you actually use in the first year of life. Do you think it's a thousand? If you're watching on the chat, please feel free to chime in. Do you think it's five thousand? The answer is actually around twenty three hundred diapers because we use about six to seven diapers a day, especially at the very beginning. So we are going through a lot of poop, right? And why is that? Well, part of it is when your newborn's younger, their stomachs are smaller and they need to eat much more frequently. And when you eat, you have a gastrocolic reflex. And what that means is as your stomach starts to fill with food, there's a natural reflex there to empty the intestine contents to make more room for the food that's coming in, right? So you may often even see your breastfed baby kind of have like a really small yellow poop um, right when they eat. And you might wonder, hmm, it's not really a complete poop. What is that? And it might be the size of, say, like a large uh, poker chip if you will. And that's that reflex reflex kicking in, kind of making room for more food in their stomachs. Formula-fed babies often have poop that looks a little bit different. It can be a light brown or greenish color, right? Formula is often fortified with iron, which is what is giving it that greenish tint. Iron can be very hard to absorb, and so it stays in the intestine, in the poop, and it's not well absorbed, which is what gives it a formula baby a slightly greenish tint to their poop. So the one that's one important to watch for is that poop with mucus. In it and might be green frothy poop it's often described as. What is what is that for? What is that caused by? So very commonly in breastfed kiddos, this is caused by what they call a bit of a four milk high milk imbalance. What does that mean? Well, when your baby's coming to your to the breast and drinking, the first milk that's released is higher in lactose, and the high milk, which comes a little bit later, is higher in fat. That's the milk that you really want to get at because that fattier milk is much more satiating and can last and satisfy them a lot longer, okay? But as I describe in the book, the snacking cycle, which a lot of breastfeeding moms and which is a cycle that I fell into, you have these very frequent short feet. And what happens is, you know, in my story, if you know it, is that I used to use the boob to soothe him to sleep. So he fed like six to eight times or more, even just during the day, not including night feeds. Okay, and when you're in the snacking cycle, they take these short, quick feeds and fall asleep at the breast. And then maybe you feed them on wake up as well. And when they do that, you don't really access that back hind milk, that fatty milk that sustains them for a long time, right? So you often have to do this in the night as well as you're having these, you're basically ruining your dinner. You're having these short snacks all day long. But what also happens is you have more of that lactose milk and that is what actually causes the green frothiness um, in the poop. 
Sometimes you can have these poops when you have excess saliva during teething. And a more serious cause could be malabsorption, um, which is a rare occurrence where the baby's not absorbing nutrients from breast milk, but that again is very rare. If it lasts, if this lasts and goes on for many days, you would absolutely be consulting your pediatrician, taking a look at it. Um, or if they seem to be in pain, or if there's any streaks of blood in that mucus CP, if you want to check out, um, get that checked out by your pediatrician. What else can happen? Well, you can have constipation, right? It's usually much more rare with breastfed kiddos. Formula does introduce that. Like I mentioned before, the iron can sometimes predispose um, that to happen. And then with toddlers as well, who maybe aren't drinking enough water, aren't having enough foods that are um, high in fiber. So for our, our kiddos, our babies, formula fed or breastfed, there's a couple little things that I like to do to help move food more easily through the intestine. Okay. So if you want to think about your large intestine, that's where your, your poop is concentrated, essentially. And your large intestine is where water is being removed or added based on what's happening in the body, okay? And if you think of your intestine, this is my little doll here, you know, it's, it's an upside down U shape. So it starts on the right, comes up, hits the ribs, goes across, and then comes back down and then goes very deep to form the rectum and the anus through here. So a lot of times, especially in toddlers, you can feel their left hip left hip and palpate and kind of feel a rigid um, thread of stool sitting in there if they're very, very constipated, okay? So in our babies, how can we help them if they're feeling, if you can see them straining but having trouble passing things, right? Well, the first one is really just general leg bicycles. And you're really pushing the knees to the chest. You're getting counter pressure on those hips and that stomach area and you're bicycling knees to the chest and pushing in. Okay. After you've done that, kind of get things a little bit mobile, you're going to find that little left hip ridge. You're going to come in a little bit and palpate down and through here. And then you're following that natural progression of the large intestine. So I'm slowly moving up a little bit, hitting that upper rib, coming across. And you can see when I'm palpating, I may be pushing in about one centimeter in depth. It's probably more than you thought, um, but you can't hurt anything in through here. And then when you come down this left side, you find that left hip again, come in a little bit. And that's where I like to do a little trigger point work of just gently massaging things through to help the food move through. And you can do this with babies. You can do this with toddlers. I've done this with my seven-year-old as well. He absolutely loves the feeling of it. Another not so popular um, approach is that you take a Kleenex or a wipe and you're going to find the anus. You are going to press it kind of like a doorbell. So if it looks like this, let's say the anus, I'm pushing there just to try and stimulate that ejection reflex to help make things happen. Easier with babies, not so great, not so easy with toddlers, and not easy with seven-year-olds by any. So those are two ways to help food move more easily through and help um, with, with uh, constipation in babies. Constipation in toddlers gets a bit more complicated, right? As sometimes you have sensory things happening where they don't like the feel uh, of now that it's been hard once and they passed it in and it hurt, they may have apprehension and start withholding. But that gets into a, a whole other ballgame. So basically what you're looking for with your baby and poop, right, is in a breastfed baby, you're looking for that natural mustardy color. Okay, and maybe baby pooping daily, a few times a day, or maybe even every few days. Okay, with breastfed babies, that can be pretty normal. With formula fed, you want more of a consistency, right? Usually they're, they're pooping a little bit um, more regularly. Um, you may have to work on some constipation because of the iron, depending on how much concentration of iron they have in that poop, essentially. But if you have mucus, you can see green poops, you want to be thinking about that food sensitivities, you want to be thinking about that four milk, hind milk imbalance that might be happening. And if you have any kind of blood in the stool, you definitely want to be consulting your doctor um, right away. That's just about everything I have to say about poop today. And if you have any comments that you would want to share of your experience with poop and pooping, please feel free to put it in the comments.